Hello and welcome to Racers Now. There is just under two weeks to go before the York showpiece of the summer, the Ebor Festival, starting on August the 21st. That's a Wednesday. Uh, four days, a group one on days one, two and three. The richest handicap in Europe on the Saturday with the Ebor itself. Starting with the Judmont on the Wednesday, as, as is tradition now, um, we looked forward to this race uh, on the channel a few weeks ago and identified that Alf Layla was and is a bet at 20 to 1. And uh, yeah, Julie uh, Julie put him up and he's gone and won since that video was recorded. He's won the known trial for this over course and distance, the York Stakes that was on July the 27th. Um, after I put that uh, Alf Layla up, I was reliably... Uh, and I've often been informed by a regular viewer that it was 20 to 1 at the time, not 20 to 5 to 1, as was in the description. And I have amended that. So 20 to 1 will be going on the races now, PL. You can blame the Racing Post odds feed for that slight error. Anyway, Alf Layla is now 10 to 1, best price. So that'll do. We're in a decent position there. And like I say, won that York Stakes for the second year running, actually. Um, it was a pretty mad race, as it turned out, on that day. Four runners, packed with quality, to be fair. And Alf Layla looked like he was beaten for about 80 or 90% of the race before getting it done close home in a bunch finish. Um, King's Gambit, not sure what to make of his performance. Passenger, now since then, is injured for the season as a result of that race. So, not quite sure. But obviously, he's done his business, Alf Layla, and he's a definite contender going into the Judmont. What's changed since our first video when we looked at the Judmont? Well, August Rodan won't be running as we predicted. Um, he ran in the King George, won't be running in the Judmont. Economics is going to run in France, which is a shame for the Judmont. But um, the softly, softly approach William Haggis is taking with economics is quite an extreme softly, softly approach, if you ask me. He won the Dante by five or six lengths in May, not been seen since. Going to that group two in France that no one knows the name of, but was won by Ace Impact last year. Um, 90, well, yeah, that's so they're the, they're the headlines of those that have come out. Passenger is injured, as I mentioned. Isla of Jorah, who won at Royal Ascot in the Hardwick, he's injured as well, probably wants further anyway. So, City of Troy is your four to five favourite. He was about 11 to 10 when we first spoke a couple of weeks ago. I've spoken about him a lot. Plenty of others have spoken about him a lot. Fast ground, it would be a big help to City of Troy if he gets it. We saw at Sandown, he wasn't that impressive. He didn't win like a one to four shot. It was probably a poorish field in behind, but softer ground was blamed for him not being at his brilliant best. Um, he's clearly the one to beat, but not bomb-proof by any means. We saw what happened in the Guineas. That does seem a long time ago now. He's won the Derby and the Eclipse since, um, and he's the one to beat for sure. Ambiente Friendly is second favourite at 8-1. to one. Not for me. I think he wants further, although Connections keep saying that they're dropping back in trip. He might not want to win, actually. Um, from what I saw in the Irish Derby, does Ambiente Friendly really want to win? As an extension of that question, is he really that good anyway? I don't think so. Um, I can't see him winning the Judmont Ambiente Friendly. So we in we are in a good position on Alf Leila. Uh Calandigan is an intended runner for French Connections, an impressive winner at Royal Ascot, but the form of that uh, win has done absolutely bugger all since White Birch. Um, they just can't get him fit. He's missed most of the season. He won the Tats Gold Cup in Ireland in May and has missed three or four intended starts since. Um, I mean, many, including myself, myself, still think White Birch needs soft ground, despite Connection saying that he doesn't. But I think to be seen at his best, he does need soft ground or softer ground. It could be rattling quick at York. That wouldn't be a surprise on day one to see it being good to firm on the Knavesmire. Then we're into horses that might well not run and might not stay or both. Uh, there is one that stands out at the prices to me, and it is Roger Varian's Matsuri, who is 66 to 1. I can't put it up as an official bet because he is also entered in the Voltager on the same day as the Judmont. He's 4 to 1 for that Voltager. So, the, but purely on the betting, it suggests that he's more likely to run in the Voltager than the Judmont. But he is quite interesting, this Matsuri. He only had his fourth start, was in the Irish Derby, and he was fourth. Um, finishing fourth. That was a fantastic effort, really. He was a tad unlucky not to be closer to the winner. Los Angeles on the day, again, an inexperienced horse. Now, he is in that Voltager, as I mentioned. He's four to one to, for that race, but it's usually a ledger trial, the Voltager, over a mile and a half for the three-year-olds. But Matt Suri is an in, entered in the ledger, a bit of a theme for that Voltager, as we will come on to in a minute. Um, so, yeah, I just think he's quite interesting. I'll be keeping an eye on him. He clearly might not run. That's why I'm not putting up an official bet and, you know, lose him two points if I put him up each way. 
Um, but I mean, with question marks over many of the others, I'm going to be keeping an eye on this, on the entries, on what Roger Verian might say. And if he says, yeah, he's going to run in the Judmont, then boom, I'll be trying to back him as quickly as possible at 66 to 1. Um, plus, like I say, I don't think he's a St. Ledger horse. He's getting mile and off for sure, definitely. Um, obviously, that was the Irish Derby distance, but I don't think he's a Ledger horse. The voltage looks pretty hot, as we're going to come on to. And you can pick up 134 grand in the Judmont for coming third. And it could be a small field. So Matt Sori is a possible interesting contender and very close to being a bet for me, but not quite. Talking of the voltage, it could be a cracker. I think I mentioned that a few weeks ago. Um, although at this stage, we've got no idea what will run. The, the waters are pretty muddy when it comes to this voltage. Um, it's crazy, really, that we bet anti-post on you know races like this, Group 2s for three-year-olds three or four weeks out. Um, three of the top five in the betting for the voltage aren't even entered in the St. Ledger, uh, which is unusual. That's Matsuri. Ambiente Friendly and King's Gambit. All three have already had a mention in this video in regards to the possible Judmont. Jan Brugel will likely skip this race and go straight to Doncaster. He won at Goodwood. He's third favourite for the Voltager. Six in the market is Ancient Wisdom, and he definitely has to have soft ground. And the form of his Bahrain Trophy win at the July meeting is crap, in my opinion. So that's the first six big question marks over most of them. Aidan O'Brien has 11 of the 23 entries at this stage. A, a big, a large, probably a double handful of them are no good anyway. Horses like the Euphrates, the Equator, Portland, they ain't winning the Voltage. They, they certainly ain't winning St. Ledger. And I've heard a rumour today, and this might be a little bit of a Racers Now exclusive, um, that Los Angeles, the Irish Derby winner, might be supplemented for this race, the, the St. Ledger. Um, sorry, the Voltage. Um, so that really would be interesting. Given that O'Brien has 11 of the entries, he's got the first and third favourite at the minute in Eleanor, who's the favourite for the Voltage. Jan Brugel's in there as well, but almost certainly won't run. So it is interesting that they are thinking and rumoured to be looking supplementing Los Angeles, the Irish Derby winner for the Voltage. He'll have to carry a penalty as a result of his Irish Derby win. Um, they might use this as a little bit of an arc trial. It's a bit of a head scratcher for me, but it wouldn't be out of the question for that to happen. So with that in mind, this market is open to a vast change. If Los Angeles comes in, obviously it'll be favourite. There's a lot of horses that could come out. Some of them are ground reliant. Some of them are entered in other races, Matsuri, Ambiente Friendly, for example. So it is crying out for a bet. And I think there is a bet. And I think that that is Dira Mayo, who's 12 to 1 at the moment. Um, it could be about that price anyway if Los Angeles comes out. Um, so I think, if, sorry, if Los Angeles comes in. There's a lot of water to pass under this bridge in, from an anti-post perspective. But Dear Amayo, 12 to 1, will stay the trip for sure. Is entered in the St. Ledger, so that's half the job. Fourth in the Derby at Epsom, which was a cracking run. I fancy him to have a productive second half of the season, this Dear Amayo. Um, might not want uh, rattling quick ground, so keep an eye on that. But day one at York will probably be softer. Um, because they can water on, say, the Monday or the Tuesday. So day one at York might be softer than the rest of the week. But 12 to 1 looks more than fair to me. A word of, uh, like I said, I've already given a word of warning for the, um, the potential for Los Angeles to come into this market, turn it on its head, shake it around. Um, yeah, so it is really a case of watch this space in terms of the voltage, but could and probably should be a cracking renewal. On to day two, this is the Yorkshire Oaks being the feature on day two of the Ebor Festival. Um, and we've got Blue Stocking is the rightful favourite at the moment. Um, she's had a productive year. She's already won at York twice in her life. Um, and she's the rightful fab. Um, an excellent second in the King George against the boys uh, on July the 27th. Um, and she had a group one win against her own sex in the Pretty Polly at the Curra before that. Uh, Emily Upjohn second there. Um, she'd like to avoid lightning quick ground, I think, this blue stocking, which, like I say, you can sometimes get at York. It gets pretty quick in the middle of August. Uh, we don't know. We're a couple of weeks away yet, so I've not looked at the forecast. Um, so, yeah, blue stocking, the rightful favourite, but will the ground turn up too quick for it? It's the right race for her. It's the right distance for her. She's the right type to win it but just keep an eye on the ground for her. If Opera Singer 
is the arc filly that Coolmore thinks she is, and Ryan Moore and Aidan O'Brien. She'll have to run over a mile and a half sooner rather than later if she's going to go to the arc. Um, so that standout seven to one at the moment in the market for Opera Singer might look big if she does indeed turn up in this race. She's as low as seven to two, four to one. That seven to one is standout, but available at time of recording. Um, so you could see her running a possible arc trial next. Maybe the, is it called the pre, what's the group one that they run uh, as a trial? Hump all know. Um, yeah, so they have three trials for the arc. One of them's for Philippe the Vermeil. There you go. Um, you could see Opera Singer running in that. She is entered in this Irish Oak. She's got to step up sooner rather than later. A winner of the Nassau at Goodwood. There'll be about a 20-ish day gap between um, Goodwood and the um, Yorkshire Oaks. Doable. Um, a big contender if running here clearly um but it's just a question of if she does emily upjohn is finished for me refuses to settle in her old age um she ran a decent race at the cora behind blue stocking there wasn't a hell of a lot else in that race she's not done anything else in her other three starts this year she just refuses to settle in her old age not for me you got to me won the irish oaks last time we saw her a bit of a bunch finish we'll probably run here in this yorkshire oaks but we'll need to improve again Jackie O might be a forgotten horse in here for Aidan O'Brien. Only ran once this year, but finished um, last year on a high with some good form in Group 1s on Champions Day and at the ARC meeting without actually winning this Jackie O. So one that's going under the radar, she carries those pink colours with the blue hat, which you don't see that often for Aidan O'Brien. Um, any ground appears fine for her. Looks like an intended runner. 12 to 1 might be of interest to some of the viewers. Um, Queen of the Prides also in there at the moment. Has got two good wins recently at Haydock in a Group 3 and a Group 2. But this is a whole new level of competition, really, for Queen of the Pride. Um, I wouldn't have her as short as 6 to 1 in here. I think that's too short. But as with many anti-post markets that we look at here on races now, there is a lot of horses listed that might well not run. Hence why Queen of the Pride, an intended runner, is six to one. No better at this stage. Um, and but the market look out for a fast ground, which will be of massive detriment to Blue Stocking even participating, never mind winning, and B, Opera Singer being confirmed as a runner. I don't know what the plans are with Opera Singer at the moment, but if she is an intended runner in the Yorkshire Oaks and Blue Stocking comes out, Opera Singer is your new favourite. Anyway, on to the Friday, which is the Group 1. The fast, only fast horses should apply for the Numfort Group 1 over five furlongs. And it's all about speed, of course. Aspora and Big Evs are one apiece this year. When they've met, they've met at Royal Ascot. Aspora came out on top. They met at Goodwood a couple of weeks ago. And Big Evs came out on top and held on in a very brave and, um, yeah, pretty impressive performance from Big Evs. Remember, he's still a three-year-old. He did win earlier in the season at York against his um, own age group. And he's, you know, I think Ascot, Royal Ascot, that stiff finish probably stretched him much better at Goodwood where he won and he clearly likes York as well. Um, also in that race behind um, Big Evs, Anders Fora was believing, who's had a brilliantly productive um, campaign this year for the for a filly. Um, she was third. Um, just another good run. She's just been running well in race after race. Um, although it must be said, she's been a busy girl. She's had six starts already this year. You might sooner rather than later start getting worried that it's becoming a long season for her. But there's no evidence of that just yet. Bradsell is the most interesting and much needed addition to the sprinting division. Um, off the track since last September until last weekend. He ran um, on August the 4th over at Deauville where he won a listed race um, pretty easily, to be honest. And say being off that long, you know, making your seasonal reappearance in August wouldn't be ideal. But that's what Bradsell did. Um, it was a nice and easy win in a listed race at Deauville. Last year's King Stand winner, remember? Um, the highest rated horse in the race is Bradsell. He was third in this race last year. A really, really interesting runner and a horse that I like. If those four that have been mentioned so far turn up, it will be a cracker. And there's no reason why they shouldn't. I think they're all very much intended runners. Live in the Dream won this race last year at 28 to 1. Hasn't reached those heights in six starts since. And somewhat put in his place, he was put in his place a little bit by Big Evs and as for it, and believing for that matter, where we were, I think he was fourth or fifth at Goodwood. Um, and there is ideal conditions, fast ground, um, speed track, and he still couldn't get past uh, as for a big Evs and believing. So living the dream, it does look a little bit of a fluke from last year. Um, definitely no bet at this stage until final decks. But if the race was today and Brad Sell was showing at eight to one like he is in the markets now. I would definitely be on. And like I said, 
those top four or five in the market are as for a big evs brad sell and believe in are very much intended runners for this so if those prices are anything to go by now they might be similar on the day after final deck brad sell the one of interest saturday um has a Group 2 in the City of York Stakes, which is on the list to be upgraded to a Group 1, actually. Seven furlong race, and there's no seven furlong Group 1 in the UK. There's only one seven furlong Group 1 in Europe. That's the foray on Arc Day. Um, I think it's going to be upgraded to a Group 1 uh, sooner rather than later. Audience is your current favourite for that race. Um, he is 7-2, to two, and I think that is a bet. Um, I really do quite like Audience for this. He was fantastic at Goodwood last time. I put him up. Um, he went off a lot shorter and he duly won easily. I think he could do the same again here at York. I, I don't know why. His 72 is just too big. He's an intended runner. No penalty. He's pretty certain to run. Um, yeah, I just think it's the best value of any anti-post market at York as we speak. Kim Ross is your second favourite. He's going backwards as a seven-year-old. I just think, yeah, audience, I see no reason why he shouldn't be back to 72. He'll go off 6-4, to 7-4 to four on the day. Um, and I, I just think he'll win, to be quite honest with you. So, yeah, audience is the best bet available as I look at the uh, York Ebor Festival anti-post at the moment. I've put up Deer a mile at 12 to 1 each way, it, at 12 to 1 win, sorry, in the Voltager and already advised Alf Layla 20 to 1, not 25, 20 to 1 um, confirmed. And um, that was a few weeks ago. Now he's around 10 to 1, but we're pretty happy with that. Also on the Saturday is the Ebor handicap itself. There's 57 runners entered at the moment. It's 10 to 1 the field. I really don't have anything else to add at this point. It's not my type of race. Um, we love the group racers, the group one racers here on Racers Now. We'll leave the handicaps to SD when he pops up on a Thursday night. But thanks for watching. Plenty to look forward to at York. And we'll be back, back soon with more anti-post previews here on Racers News.